When you have multiple signals and you want to switch between them to set which one's active at a time, there's obviously chips for that already, like analog switches and muxes. But what I want to do is have two different clock signals and be able to switch between them using a single bit, so a two to one mux. And it seemed like a waste to use an entire switcher mux chip just for that. So since it's a simple digital signal and I could use logic to compare, you know, the, the selector bit with the signal bits, instead of some sort of actual switching arrangement, I thought, what if I use actual logic gates? That would be simpler. And as it turns out, I can. I can make a two to one digital signal mux using nothing but a single quad NAN chip. And that's still a full chip, but it's an extremely cheap and ubiquitous chip that because of its utility, it, you're probably gonna have a box of. Because the NAND gate is the universal gate, the NOR gate also, but I like NAND better because it's series NPN. And that's another thing, by doing this, I could also just use transistors directly, MOSFETs or even BJTs rather than a chip if I wanted. So let's look at the logic. So let's say we have two digital signals, A and B. In my case, it's two clock signals, but it's any digital signal. Let's also have D, D for direction. So we'll say D is high to select A, and it's low to select B. We'll just decide that, it doesn't matter. If D is high, then we want to select A. So we could say if D is high and A is high, the output should be high, otherwise low. So we could say A and D. And if D is low, in other words, not D is high, and B is high, then the output should be high, otherwise low. So we have B and not D. And then if either of these is true overall, then the output should be high. So by doing this, I use Boolean logic to make a mux for two clock signals. It's all about how you think about something. You don't think about a clock signal as a logical signal like this, but it is. It's just, it's just conceptual. The problem here is you got AND gates, you got OR gates, you got NOT gates, or inverter. That's a pain in the butt. That's already three chips or three different arrangements of transistors. But the thing is, again, the NAND gate is the universal gate. So any particular circuit that has logic in it, it may be more efficient. Like maybe you get a NAND chip, a NOR chip, a NOT chip, an OR chip, an XOR chip. Maybe if you have complex logic like that, it'll be more efficient to actually use chips with those gates in them. Maybe. But my philosophy is I don't want 17 boxes of freaking chips. So I have a box of NAND chips and a box of inverters. And with that, I can make anything. It may take more gates, but it doesn't take more types of chips. Now, if you go on the internet, I forget what I even Googled, but look around for like Boolean logic solver or something. There's a million different tools. Just pick the one that looks pretty. You can go on the internet and you can put in this. You put in your whatever logic and you can tell it, give me the result in just NAND gates and inverters. Because remember, if you want to say not D, that's the same as D NAND D. So, that, so you can use a NAND gate as an inverter, it's just NAND with itself. Now obviously that's a waste if you've got an inverter, you would use that, because you can fit six inverters on a chip and four NANDs on a chip. But if you look here, one, two, three, four, I've got four logical operations, two AND, one OR, and one NOT. So it occurs to me, is it possible to take these four operations and turn them into four NAND operations to conveniently fit on one chip? Yep. So you go on the internet, put it in the solver, and it tells you this. A, NAND, D, NAND, B, NAND, not D. So this is one standard notation, but to make things a little nicer, I'm going to write it out. Instead of the formal mathematics one, I just wanted to show you that to be like, oh, this is how you'll probably see it. But let's just write it this way. So A NAND D, that's one gate. B NAND not D, that's two gates. And then both of those together, NAND is your third gate. To get D not, we can just do D NAND D. So one, two, three, four gates, one chip. And if you do it with discrete BJTs, it's eight transistors, because it's two series NPNs for a NAND gate. But if you're using discrete transistors, you don't need to do D NAND D, it's just D inverted. So it would actually be seven, seven transistors. So that's pretty handy. So 
There's the magic. You can write out the truth table and prove it to yourself that it works. You can study formal, you know, formal Boolean logic and, and do that math. There's rules. You can solve that by hand. There's rules you can follow. But it's easier to just ask the internet to simplify. So if I were to wire it up as a circuit, we can take D and we can invert it by putting it through this NAND. We can take A and D, put them through that one. We can take B and the result of this inversion through that one, and then the two of these together into this one, and we have out. So D NAND D, which is not D, B NAND that, A NAND D, the two of those NANDed out, four NAND gates. And this is a two to one digital MUX. So we have one bit that selects the direction, or which one, you could say, you know, input zero, input one, however you want to look at it, easy enough. So now let me show you with a real chip so you know I'm not just fooling you. So I've just got the NAND chip hooked up to a breadboard and hooked up to my Arduino. And I've got A and B set up as the input signals, D as the direction to select the signal. So we'll set it to high. And here's out. And I just added these as labels. If D is high, we select A. And if D is low, we select B. So right now D is high and here's the output. So A is switching and there's the output and it ignores B. And then if D is low, it ignores A and it selects B. Literally all there is to it. A simple logical operation to combine any digital signals of which a clock signal is one. You could even switch between PWM signals like this. Any digital signal. Is it made up of high and low and nothing else? Then it's a digital signal. Make sure to keep an open mind whenever you're doing electronics. So obviously it's easier to use a switch or a MUX chip, but I like this because it's simple, cheap, and gives me options. And another benefit is the A and D signal, or the A NAND D. You know, because I've got A NAND D, and then D NAND D, and then B NAND not D, and then those two NAND out. So the A NAND D signal, because I have these as four separate gates, I can use that signal. Instead of just being a MUX, I can directly use part of this logic in a different circuit. And that's gonna come in handy in one of my upcoming videos. But for now, I'll be seeing you.